Hello, everybody, and welcome to the newest indoor adventure in Quantum Mortality, a Planescape adventure, part one. Today is July 28th, 2024, and you are loved. And that is a very important thing that we like to remind each and every single one of our viewers and listeners at the beginning of each and every single one of these shows. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash indoor adventures to check up on all of the VODs of each of the games that we have played up until this point, or you can go towards where anywhere audio casts are being made available for free. You can find us there under the same moniker. And speaking of things that are being made available for free, if you go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures, you can check up on our after show called Nights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from each other but also from the community so if you have any questions for myself or any of these other fine folk feel free to again join us at patreon.com slash indoor adventures but let's say you already support us on patreon you already support us on youtube and twitch and all of those other wonderful places and you're trying to think to yourself where can i go to help support this fantastic show even more well guess what acorns i got your back quite literally in fact because if you go to indooradventure.redbubble.com we got t-shirts we got posters we got mugs we got crop tops throw pillows shower curtains aprons clocks we even have face masks with the symbol of tiamat upon them designed by our very own cyberwolf 1201 and we may have some more merch in the pipeline for this fun show so keep a lookout it's gonna be a great time but with that being said, all of the proceeds of all of our merch currently goes to help support Doctors Without Borders. So if you would like to help support a good cause or possibly help support the show, you can again go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. But that is it for my opening spiel. So hey, uh, hey, Dingo, uh, who are you playing tonight? Uh, I'm Dingo. I use she, her, and he, him pronouns. Uh, and tonight I'm playing Shriek who's a fire genasi cleric. And Kylan, who are you playing tonight? Hi, everybody. It's me, Kylan. I use she, fey pronouns. And today I am playing Tessel, the dragonborn fighter who uses they, them pronouns. Hey, everybody. Today I am wings. And most days, actually, all days I am wings. Uh, but today I am playing as Aluvir, uh, who is a minotaur bard. Uh, we both use she, they, she, her. Jesus, where where am I and what's going on? <laughs> That's a question for Cyber, but for now, hello, everybody. I am the indoor adventurer. I use he, him pronouns, and tonight I shall be playing as Orillo Thread Twister, a definitely not failed merchant, human spellcaster. Uh, he also uses he, him pronouns. And hi, I'm Cyber. I use he or any pronouns. Uh, I am going to be a dungeon master. I'm going to be running a game of Dungeons and Dragons for my friends. It's going to be sort of based off of the Turn of Fortune's Wheel adventure, but with so many things uh, twisted and turned. And Let's just go ahead and get started, because why not? In the half-consciousness of awaking, the first thing you hear is an array of tiny scratches, the telltale sound of tiny creatures scurrying just out of sight. A nasally voice echoes throughout the room. All right, what's, uh, what's new with the us, it seems to ponder. In response, there's a tiny squeak followed by a monotone voice. At Gale in Deep Waters. Counterspell is just silvery barbs for people without depression send squeak. At Factal Montgomery. Election Day will be here before you know it. Check on your registration status and get a voting plan together. Make your feelings known. At Knight's Courtyard. New edition of Knights in the Courtyard, breaking down the season finale of Dungeon Land. That wild magic gamble versus the red dragon villain, and viral moments with the unhinged Modron. A scratchy voice, muffled as if coming from another room, yells out, Mort! I asked you to start on the new Dusties and move their stuff to possessions. Consciousness comes to you as you awaken on a metal examination table in a dim, windowless stone chamber. The air is cold and stale, tinged with the acrid sting of formaldehyde 
emanating from a nearby shelf of cloud flasks and antiseptic jars. Dry blood stains the drab, mosaic floor and the edges of your table, and painted, pained moans haunt the halls just beyond the stuffy room. A human skull floats nearby. It bobs impatiently, watching you with slate gray eyes that remain in its lidless sockets. The skull notices you're awake and greets you with the same nasally voice. Hey, chief. Um. Arillo. Why don't you describe the, the person leaning up from the table? Uh, so Arillo, leaning up from the table, has just a mess of brown hair. Uh, kind of, I would say, like, typically he keeps it a little bit styled, but this is like a disheveled goatee. Uh, you can tell, like, he does not really know where he is, and he's holding a robe of this light beige color around him like it's one of those, like, silvery emergency blankets that they have, and it's covered in patches that depict various things. Uh, some have ladders, some have a dog... Uh, maybe two dogs even, but we'll never truly know. Uh, and at this point, he just is looking around with these wild green eyes. And he sees this human skull. He looks at his hands and kind of closes them. And as he does, he just starts breathing. But the breathing is more excited as a smile takes a hold of his face. And he just starts saying to himself, it worked. It worked! Alabar? Uh, you hear this man screaming at the other table and uh, sort of lean up on the table. Uh, can you describe Alabar? Um, it's, it's a quick movement. Uh, she sort of like pops up uh, with this nervous energy uh, and there's a jingling sound as she does so because... Um, she has these long animated ears that are just lined uh, with earrings, um, as well as um, these horns that are capped uh, with gold um, and various rings along the horns that also have jingly jewelry. Um, and she just sort of like turns and like looks around, like trying to like break, like take in everything around her. Uh, she's wearing a uh, very um, bright colored sort of ostentatious clothes, but otherwise um, is a very small, uh, pale looking minotaur uh, with a very timid disposition. Um, and whenever Tessel uh, rears up from the table, what do they look like? Yeah, so Tessel is a dragonborn uh whose scales seem pure white at first but um well i don't know exactly how much light is down here but were any light to shine upon them would uh give kind of a prismatic fractal um appearance to it um they have these deep purple eyes and uh in terms of their attire Let's go with kind of uh, outlander punk hermit kind of <laughs> aesthetic to it um, with a uh, ridge of horns that kind of form a little thinned mohawk um, as they slowly sit up on the table. Um, they kind of look around taking everything in and just kind of mutter to no one in particular is this where I'm supposed to be? Absolutely not. Uh, Shriek. Whenever she gets up from the table, what does Shriek look like? I cannot hear you. Sorry. There we go. I think Shriek lays flat for a while. Um... And we just see uh, her eyes pop open. They're completely all filled in dark black, um, deep and expansive. Um, 
but she is sort of a, a very crisp, pale, flat white um, with this sort of golden filigree kind of around the edges of her face, running up her hands, sort of freckling her shoulders. Uh, she's big. She's uh, a very, very tall, broad woman, um, muscular, probably about seven feet tall, um, with these two kind of um, overfluffed French braids of uh, hair that starts white at the roots and then sort of um, fades into the colors of the dawn. So these blues, oranges. Um, and I think she just blinks for a few moments, sort of listens around her, um, tilting one, tilting her head to one side and then the other. Uh, she's sort of dressed in these um, simple but uh, sort of orangey golden fabrics. Um, and she slowly sort of props herself up uh, on her elbows and says, This is not my beautiful home. Uh, no. No, it's not. Um, just the... There is a sense of something that has been forgotten. You are... Uh, how you got here, or even where here is, you are not immediately sure of um but looking around uh this skull definitely not familiar probably could not have forgotten that thing uh there is a sense of deja vu of like a, some sort of familiarity with the other four not corpses waking up from these mortuary tables. There are other bodies in the room that are definitely dead. And uh, the, the floating skull just goes, yeah, um, you're supposed to be dead. Uh... Four corpses came in here for processing, and uh, this place this place ain't safe for the living, so unless you want to go back to being corpses, you might want to skedaddle. At the mention of supposed to be dead, there is some very alarmed jingling as Alivire very animatedly reacts to that. Um, sorry, but, um, I don't suppose you have one of those, like, cause of death type reports uh that would be in records if it's still here uh you, you maybe keep going down the hall you'll you'll find them how long have we been down here i don't know a couple hours a real she sort of thinks for a moment uh Arillo will go to like sit up and swing his legs over the table, but he still hasn't regained like full muscle composure yet. So it's just more of a tumble off the side and then a quick pop up like arms on the table looking at Mort. Um, are things, are stuff, is this, where would we go for that? Uh, well, you're... <laughs> I didn't have time to take your stuff down to possession, so it's all on that table. And he'll uh, look across the room. There's a uh, table that has uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Thank you, good skull. And Arillo, like, throws his upper body in the direction of the table, and then <laughs> he's just, like, crawling along the floor towards his things. Shriek will uh, 
pick herself up uh, and lean down and sort of scoop Arillo up, um, kind of holding him under the arms. Slow, small man. Clearly you are not in the state that you were. No, because I'm alive. Don't you see? It's perfect. Slightly less than perfect, but... You, ah, hmm. Uh, she'll kind of hang him off the edge of the table where all the stuff is um, and just sort of stand uh, and stare at all of the things. Um, yeah, uh, Tess will, they'll, they'll get up as well. Uh, seeing Arillo's example will <laughs> be a little more cautious and, uh, definitely brace themselves on things for support as they, uh, walk over. Um, we'll take a very battered looking shield and long sword and we'll just be like, excuse me, I believe these are mine. <laughs> Oh, in a cool cloak. Can't forget that. This girl uh, looks, uh, looks around like, okay, that's four less that I have to deal with. Uh, let's see. And he just uh, dips down to like a little uh, pencil that's uh, laying down on this desk. Bites it and sort of lists over and starts scribbling down on a clipboard. Uh, Shriek will hold out her hand uh, to Alivare and kind of gesture to the things on the table, offering some support if, uh, if she needs it. Uh, she's just sort of daintily sitting up uh, on the pallet. Uh, she'll take that hand. Uh, and carefully put a hoof down on the floor and there's like a slight clattering as she does so. Uh, I believe as you guys are like digging through our belongings, somebody like comes up with a loot um, and uh, whoever does that will hear in their mind, um, it's not a voice, it's just a general awareness that you have something that belongs to her. If no one stops him to the best of his ability, Arillo will be doing a full Scrooge McDuck in this pile of gear. <laughs> just like somehow swimming through it, um, just pulling stuff out if need be. So I think he'd probably be the one to like, like this belongs to <laughs> Alavir. Just does it like, and does it say the name? Does it say the name Alavir or just like this belongs to me and then the me in reference? It's is a like... it's sort of a like, oh, excuse me, that that's mine. I think Arillo would look at it and just like kind of like to the loot, just my apologies and set the loot back down on the table and then start like looking through the other stuff. It floats gently towards her. She mage hands it and then she just sort of slinks back to the back of the group. I think when everyone has sort of picked through and gathered up uh, their stuff, a uh, shriek at the end of it sort of gathers the leftovers, um, a warhammer, <clears throat> um, some little uh, shiny bits and bobs, um, a deck of cards, that kind of thing. It just says, I suppose then these are mine. I um don't know about you all, and I won't presume what your plans will be after this, but um, I myself am quite curious uh, as to how we might have gotten ourselves in this situation. Um, and I'll see if I can stop by the records room. Uh, all are welcome to join me. Uh, Arillo, like balancing himself on his staff uh just i would love to join if not for myself but for the others 
Shriek leans over to Oliver and says, are we quite sure that he's actually alive? There's no response, but she just sort of trembles slightly and there's a jingling. <laughs> uh, but Shriek will, Shriek will follow the group. All right. Uh, as you open the door, leaving, leaving this uh, examination room, uh, there's a hallway uh, leading out from this door. There are rooms on the left and right, and uh, the hallway does open up to a um, to a further like fork further up. Um, on the right, the the door appears to be slightly open. On the left, um, there's a closed door with a sign on top, uh, like a placard, ring possessions. Just gonna casually peek. Tessa will casually peek their head into the door with, or the room with the open door, um, to see what might be inside. Once you push open this door, uh, you immediately get hit with the reek of embalming fluid. Um, there's a mortician in a bloodstained apron hunching over a a humanoid amalgam of patchwork flesh. Elbow deep in its flayed open chest with a pair of surgical instruments, this doctor causes the corpse-like creature to twitch and writhe with her movements. Uh, and as she notices uh, you across the door, uh, she says, nope, get back down. <sighs> uh, the mangle of flesh sort of leaps up from the table, uh, taking the surgical instruments with it. Great, now you've upset her. Help me. Everybody roll for initiative. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, gang! <laughs> Whoops. Oh, no. 18. 12. 22. Oh. 15. Right. Arello got uh, 18. Alor. 22. I'm moving at the speed of fear. <laughs> uh, Tessel. 12. And Shriek. 15. Uh, Alvar, you're going to be up top. Uh, in the middle of the room uh, is this uh, angry amalgam. Okay. Who is the strongest looking person here? The amalgam. <laughs> uh, who is not likely to tear my arms off. I'm just gonna go out on a limb. Say me. <laughs> okay. So the dragon, the, like the ripped dragonborn. It's either that or the seven foot tall, tall lady. Um, Aluvire opens her mouth as if to scream, and no sound comes out. She darts behind Tessel and hides behind them, um, and casts enlarge on them. Oh, dip. Hang on, I gotta go. See what I can do with that. Pull up the spell. You become bigger. You embiggen. I am embiggened. Um, I'm sure my size is just a simple medium. So yes. So now I am large. Um, you are to become large. Um, You also have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, and you gain, do deal an extra 1d4 damage. Sick. Thank so you. So that's you. Uh, and Aluvire, probably with no bonus actions. Um, well, she's got bardic inspirations. I'll hold on to those. I'll hold on to those for a bit. 
Why not? I'll inspire you as well. All in. All the eggs. All the eggs. Here you go, basket. Let's go. <laughs> what does, if I may ask, uh, inspiration look like from Alavire? Good question. She has her, she has her loot. Um, well, yes. As as I said, she hides uh, behind you, um, and I think that it's actually just like a really complicated lick that she plays on her loot, and she plays it a little too fast. Like you can tell that, like to make it sound good, it, like she would have to like take her time with it, you know, and like uh, maybe like put some emphasis on certain parts of it. She's just playing it all as fast as she can, uh, and um. <laughs> then uh, kind of like smacks you in the butt with it to punctuate. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm glad I asked. All right. Arillo. Uh, Arillo seeing, uh, seeing this creature just go, uh, I think sees it as just like flesh mon like flesh golem. Nice. Uh, and he will um, it's just sort of like flick his hair out of the side of his head, like out of the side of uh, his vision point. Um, and he is going to try and cast a spell that is beyond his current level, but he thinks he can very confidently do it. So he like points his finger and nothing happens. Like looks, has this bit of worry, just, oh, magic missile. Like just default to what I know. I used to be better at this. Uh, so magic missile is create three glowing darts. So the first dart was for three points of damage. Second was for three points of damage. And third was for five. So a total of 12 points of force damage. It's just like I... 11. <laughs> oh, okay. 11 points. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, three. That's not eight. Yeah, eleven points. And I think he's just like, why I paid the I math just... budget. <laughs> <laughs> he he says to himself, why couldn't I disintegrate? That it? Yeah, that's it. All right, Shriek. Um, Shriek is going to look at the amalgam, um, and she's going to cast command at first level um and it has to make a dc 14 wisdom saving throw um as she attempts to look at it wherever its eyes may be if it has them um or at least in their direction and says recline I had to check something. Okay. Uh, command does still work if the thing is immune to charm. It does not work if something is undead, which this thing is not. Uh, okay. How about a seven? Does not hit. Or does not does not succeed. All right. Oh, hang on. It does have magic resistance. What about a twelve? Does not hit DC fourteen. Okay. It reclines. It lays back down. The uh, scalpel and forceps sticking out of its tummy, or the cavity is where a tummy should be. Anything else? I think that's all Shriek can do uh, for right now, so. All right, Tessa. Uh, question for you, DM. Uh, is this table on wheels? Yes. Another question, and you don't have to give me exact numbers. How big is this room? This room is... 25 feet wide and 45 feet long. 
Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Tassel is going to be like, okay, great, that's sorted. Let's just and push the little gurney thing <laughs> as hard as they can <laughs> just away. <laughs> All right. You push it. It rolls. <laughs> Um, this mortician, um, let me, uh, let me paint a little picture real quick, uh, and also post one. Uh, she has long, graying blonde hair, uh, wrink very wrinkled face, uh, by at least the top half of it, because the bottom half of her, uh, mouth and jaw are completely translucent. Uh, and seem to have been composed of wax and sort of attached back to the actual humanoid flesh. Um, you're supposed to be dead. What is the meaning of this? Just looking for records! We can't, we can't say we know ourselves. We simply awoke. Um, and she will, um, do a couple of necrotic blasts, one of which is a natural 20, uh, on the flesh golem. Eleven, eighteen, twenty-nine. Great. The the flash column lays back, um, back at the top of the round. Alivar. Okay. Um, is the flesh golem still up. Well, it, it's leaning leaning back down, but the mortician just blasted it with a couple of blasts of necrotic energy. Mm-hmm. 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 But not dead. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, trample until dead. This is the instinct. Okay. Um, how's about a uh, mind sliver? Okay. Can I get an intelligence saving throw? Uh, with advantage... Uh, this thing rolled a 7 and a 2, so that's a 5. Okay, that's that'll be a failure. Um, it will subtract a d4 from its next saving throw okay. uh, before the end of my next turn, and it's going to take 2 psychic damage. Um, Olivier makes a rude gesture at it. All right, anything else? I think that'll be it for now. All right, Arillo. Oh, I've got a question. I, I just realized as I was... I didn't realize I had both of these. Um, So uh, as, a, as an eloquence bard, I have an ability to use my bardic inspiration for something called unsettling words, mm -hmm. which has pretty much the exact same ability as, um, as mind sliver. Would I be able to stack those? Yes. Because they okay. are not the same spell, uh, yes, not, you would be able to. Not from them. the same source. Okay, I will keep that in mind. Well, it worked the first time. Um, so I'm going to try and point and cast banishment, and it does not work. So we're just going with magic missile a second time. Ah, it didn't work that way. Okay, hold on. There we go. So that is four plus two is six plus five is another 11 points of force damage. Okay. And then it is going to be the uh, Scooby-Doo corner totem of Tessel, Alivire, and Arillo. 
just uh, e like poking out behind the big strong creature. All right, Shriek. Uh, Shriek, I think is going to. Um, she raises one of her hands and points at the creature, um, and the sound of a bell rings out, and she's going to toll the dead. What kind of save? Um, I don't think it's a save. I, I think it's a, it's an, a, a spell attack. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a wisdom saving throw for Toll the Dead. Is it? Yep. Oh, yeah. Always... They must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. I always mix up Toll the Dead and Lich Lab. Natural 20. Fuck. <laughs> Minus a d6. Natural 20. Minus okay. 2. Oh, d6? I, I believe so. Let me double check. Or, or is a it a d4? I think it might be a D4. It's a D4. Yep. Minus a D4. Sorry. Uh, Arillo will... Um, I'm going to cast Silvery Barbs on this. Gale might have been shit... Gale might have been shit talking it, but we got Silver up in here. Reroll that D20. Six. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Uh, has oh, it lost your hit wait. points? Five. Uh, and then I will choose Tessel. Uh, the chosen creature has advantage on the next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw it makes within one minute. Oh, hell yeah. That's part of Silvery Barbs. I always forget. Bram, no, no you cannot play with, with that depression. feather. <laughs> he's, he's after the pirate. He wants that feather. Oh. Let him have it. Naughty. Can't have. Um, has has uh this creature's taken damage, right? Oh yes. Okay, then it's a D12. Come on. Three points of necrotic damage. Okay. Castle. Okay, seeing that um this thing is well not technically up but <laughs> still uh in a pissy mood and alive ish um and noticing that even the mortician was like ah tessel's like ah okay so this <laughs> this is the course of action uh and they will um run up and stab it uh, yeah. And I believe I get to do that with advantage because of silvery barbs. Is Correct. That and then we yes, it your... is also prone. Oh, yeah, true. And then because of your okay. um, enlarged state, you add a d4 to your damage, I believe. Correct. Well, let's, let's see how this goes. First roll. 16? That'll hit. Yay. Okay. Crit um, fish. See if you get a nat 20. Why not? Oh, that was with yeah. advantage. Oh, okay. Ooh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a two and a ten. Hot dog. Um, I did not establish that I was doing this two-handed. Um, so we're just gonna do one-handed. You can and... do two-handed. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna fucking. Uh, Tessel's just gonna be like, <laughs> plunge the sword into the stone, right? Um, okay. So, uh, roll that. Um. Okay, plus a d4 brings us to, oh my gosh, that was nice. 14 points of damage. Make a perception check. All righty. 19. Where you stab within this flesh cavity, um... You see the equipment that uh, the mortician was working with, uh, the scalpel, the forceps, a couple of sponges. Um, you also see something else metallic within 
the flesh. Like a foreign object that is within there. Any sort of, like, can I make out any sort of sense of what it might be? Or just like, I see something shiny at this it's, point. The glint of it makes it seem like a small metallic, like, rod, like, um, I don't know, like, vaguely this big very slender uh you would need to probably root around in the flesh a little bit more to get a better look at it but that's what you notice getting ideas for next turn <laughs> all right uh that is gonna be me for now we'll uh hold on to some other stuff all right all right Sorry to make you dead again. Uh, the mortician does some damage. Uh, and the... <laughs> the flesh golem is going to sit up and make a punch at Tessel. Who is right next to it. Does a 22 hit. Eek. Tessel, you are going to be taking 20 points of bludgeoning damage as, yeah, that's... It, as it slams into you. That's a good amount, huh? <laughs> We're up! <laughs> does a 10 hit? No. Oh, no. Okay. Its second slam does not slam you down further into the ground. Alivar. <laughs> this... This crystal dragonborn just got punched by the flesh. Oh no, that looks like it hurt. I'm glad I'm over here. Um, how's about another mind sliver? <laughs> Play my little loot. Intelligent Nine. saving throw. Oh, sorry, Nine. sorry. It's yeah, okay. No. Um, that's gonna uh be a another D four against its uh next saving throw. Um, and then ooh, maximum damage for six psychic damage. Arillo. I can hear you, Arillo. Uh, Arillo, things aren't looking great, fam. Uh, Arillo is going to use his last first level spell slot for another magic missile. Okay. <laughs> How do you want to do this? Oh my god! It um, has one hit point. Okay. Thank goodness. Uh, yes! <laughs> I think Arillo, uh, after trying a variety of spells uh, that do not work, he finally has that realization of just like, you know what? I know I can do magic missile. I'm just going to do magic missile until that thing is not a problem anymore. Bat, bat, bat. And he, uh, I think, just like tilts his staff in the direction, cocks it, and then just like shoots three times. Uh, and the, the, the flesh golem, parts of it become concave. There's a squelching. It's, it's rough. Uh, but it falls back and once again reclines on the on the mortuary table, and this mortician just kind of sighs from their wax mandible. All right, what is going on here? Why did I have to kill Francine? Oh, you never name golems. First rule. Um, sorry, hello. Um, uh, I don't believe we're supposed to be here. Ah, uh, you were definitely supposed to be here, but you're, you're just supposed to be dead. Stranger things have happened in Sigil, I suppose. 
Let's. Or do I know that if we're in Sigil or not? Make a make an intelligence check. Just base intelligence. Uh, Arcana. That Arcana is a twenty six. Yeah, you, uh, Arillo, in your past experiences, you have visited Sigil before. You would know about the morticians of Mortuary and the Heralds of Dust. You would know that this is most likely the place where bodies are prepared um, in the City of Doors. You are in the I'm in the pr I was you in the were processing in the, room. the center of the multiverse. Yeah. And uh yeah, it, it, you were you were definitely uh in the hands of some morticians. <sighs> kind of like touches his stomach a little bit like mm, they might have been rooting around in there and I don't know if I like that. Um Are they Alavir pokes out from behind uh Tessel um, and through signs and gestures, casts message to the mortician. Uh, hi, yeah, sorry. Um, we're supposed to be here? Why? Um, yes, uh, sorry. I'm being incredibly rude. My name is Jex. Uh, I am one of the morticians here in Mortuary. Um, we got... Uh, a good amount of corpses earlier today. Uh, the four of you I definitely recognize. Uh, yes, your corpses were brought here. You were definitely dead. I'm surprised that you are not still dead. Um, and since you do not appear to be dead, I would suggest that you get out of here because this place is not fit for the living. D dead, dead, dead? Yes, dead. How? How? When? Why? Uh, look, I, I don't know. I'm not in charge of records, but death certificates, um, if you request them, uh, you can get them from the records room further down the hall. Alavir immediately starts, like, checking herself for injuries, and she, like, pulls up a sleeve and finds a tattoo that definitely was not there before. And she's like, whoa! <laughs> Um, I, I want to say while this is happening, Tessel is just, like, grabbing the, the tools from inside the flesh golem, and will also go for the little metal rod, probably thinking it's just one of the mortician's tools. It is a key. <gasps> oh. Are you trying to do this stealthily? What's that? Are you trying to do this without, uh, the mortician seeing? Um, I don't, I don't think they are trying to be stealthy, because I think they are going in with the intent of returning these tools to the mortician. Oh, uh, did you, did you grab that key? Oh, yes. All right, uh, if you, if you don't mind, on your way out, could you put that in cold storage? I think that's where it was supposed to go. I just dropped it whenever I was operating on Francine. Uh, it's down the hall to the left. Okay. Can I ask a question? I retain the right to not answer. That is fair. Was Francine supposed to be alive? Eh, I can make her alive again. It'll just take a little bit. Oh. Oh, all right. Well, um, my apologies, and we will see ourselves out as quick as we can. We appreciate your, your help. Great. Have a nice death. And I think Shriek will kind of turn and like spread her arms and try to uh, uh, 
shepherd everyone out. All right, you make your way back out into the hallway. Um, directly across from you is the room uh, labeled Possessions, and the hall leads further down to the right. And down the hall. All right. Is, is anybody missing anything? Should we stop in the Possessions room? I am terrified of that room. I have, all, I have all my things, but possessions in a mortuary could mean ghosts. I had not considered that. Yes, let's... I'd rather not fight with a ghost. I am feeling a little eepy right now. All right. Um, if you turn down the hall uh, toward the direction where Jax and Mort have pointed... Uh, you see that there is a uh, door, like an iron door with uh, some grating uh, with two levers next to it that seems to lead further down. Uh, the hallway also stretches um, in the directions left and right. Um, there appear to be doors at the ends of both of them. So you can go left, right, or center. Uh, the direction to cold storage that uh, Jex pointed out would be to the left. And and do we remember, <laughs> I'm sure we remember this, but for the viewers at home that might have missed this detail, do we remember which way the records room is? Down they the just hall said further to the down the, left. the hall. Oh. Further down the hall. That was cold okay. storage. Okay, yeah, left is cold storage. Um... Okay, well, I have a key. I will go drop this off. I will drop off the key. <laughs> All right. Uh, whenever you open up this door, as you cross into the chamber, you notice the air has become frigid. You see six large drawers, the doors made of rusted iron, built into the stone walls. Um, and as you look around for a key ring to put the key down on, uh, you hear a banging against one of them. I'm going to say, based on previous experiences that may have occurred very recently that door should stay closed and if it's another revived soul such as ourselves do we think someone will come check and you see i was gonna point at the drawer and she's going to cast message. Hey. What's going on in there? Um. I don't know. I woke up here. It's cold. How On a scale from 1 to 10, how dead do you think you are? Um. <laughs> I don't think I'm dead. Okay. Um, she's gonna turn to Tessel. Uh, and like she's gesturing at you, like she's making signs and such. Uh, but you can kind of hear in your mind uh, and infer what she's trying to say to you. Um, and it's, yeah, I think actually they're alive. They, they might be like us. I don't know who's in there, but they don't think they're dead? I wish that was Hi, more I can... reassuring. <laughs> Hi, I can talk in your brain, kind of, sort of. It's complicated. Um, you know, I will... 
I may have been too quick to judge. Maybe I should give this um, person a shadow of a doubt, considering our our circumstances. Oh, better it... safe than sorry. Completely understand. <laughs> if it makes you feel a little better, I can be the one to open it, and we can all stand ready. Okay, you know what? This seems like a good game plan. If this conversation is taking longer than a minute, Arillo is in the background rich, uh, performing a find familiar spell uh, <laughs> at a uh, expedited ritual because of his awakened spell book from his, uh, from his wizard school. So he's just getting his frog back. That's what he wants right now. <laughs> this, is, this is comfort frog. Uh, that enlarge would wear off also. Um, I think Shriek would kind of uh, snap her fingers at Arillo as she's walking by to open the things and says, stand at attention, please. He is just holding his frog like on, like the frog I think would like hop up onto his shoulder uh, and he just, oh yes. Um, dead, not dead? We think not dead. 50% or at least non-zero chance dead then. Whoever wants to open the door, be my guest. I will lay suppressive fire. Uh, Shriek will go over and um, if it's unlocked and she is able to, uh, we'll try. Check. What's that? Make a strength check. Ooh, okay. question mm -hmm. am i able to cast guidance on myself yes um i think she just kind of runs her hands uh over her arms um and just kind of takes a deep breath um folding her hands together and then she's going to Do a strength check. Fingers crossed. Uh, hold on. Ten. The door is like you're pulling on it. It seems like it should be open. Like it doesn't seem to be locked. Like the little clicky thing to turn the knob or whatever. It's pressing in. It just seems like the door is jammed. It's stuck. And you I hear can... just muffled from the other thing from within the drawer. Yeah, that's my problem. It's stuck. Oh, um, uh, and t like turns to Tessel. You look very strong. Could you perhaps, if we pull it together? Uh, Tessa will nod, uh, and, and question, I don't remember how long inspiration lasts and how long it's been since, uh, previously. Uh, inspiration, I believe, is 10 minutes? Mm hmm Okay. Are we still good on that? Yep. Okay. Um, then I will, uh, with, with Shriek's assistance, uh. Get a thumbs up, Alavire smiles and backs away a little bit. <laughs> Just, uh. Yank this door. <laughs> All right, make a strength check with uh, some advantage from the hill. Ooh, all right. Come on, baby. All right, we are going to add that inspiration to it. Is that a d6 at this level? Uh, yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, okay. Ooh, come on. Wow. 17? pull and pull and pull on the door and eventually you uh there is some give you are able to overcome whatever was jamming it um align the wheels back on the on those little rails and uh out rolls this uh metal table with this pasty face human so pale 
his lips are blue. Dew was probably about to become hypothermic. Um, and he's just shivering. Thanks. Hi. Um, oh, I'm Fruth. Fruth, it's good to meet you. I'm so sorry. Um, and turns to Arillo and starts like pulling at his um <laughs> at his robe. Give them your robe. No, this is all I have left. Get your own robe. And he slaps <laughs> the hand. <laughs> uh, Alvir, I like will... not even looking, is just gonna grab a tarp off of a body and like does offer this... it to the poor guy. Does this individual is are they wearing clothes at all, or are they are they yes. Jaber? Okay, if they're wearing clothes, press to digitation. I'm going to start warming a cubic foot of non living material for an hour. I'm going to choose their clothes and just press to digitate. Okay. I think I learned my lesson. No naps at work. What a fucking first day. You you work here? Yeah. It's my first day. Oh, okay. Should get a button or something that says be nice to me. It's my first day. So that way others would know. Not that it would have helped you in your situation, but just sort of a thing that you could do might be fun. So you you fell asleep and then you woke up here. Yeah, that's the that's the long and short of it. You didn't fall asleep here. I didn't fall asleep here. No, I was oh. uh, I was where the sh the corpses came down. Oh. I can relate. I didn't fall asleep here either, and I certainly woke up here. Hey, you were where the corpses came down. We don't <laughs> look familiar to you, do we? Uh-uh. Good. Should we get going? <laughs> Uh, Fruit, I... I have a question. This might have, like, some implications of the lore of the world that I'm not familiar with. Are dragonborn, like, hot-blooded? If you were to hug a dragonborn, would you feel heat or would it be kind of chilly? <laughs> Depends on the dragonborn. Okay, what if you are crystal? Crystal dragonborn. Uh, you would neither be super, super hot or super, super cold. Uh, you would be like human humanoid ish kind of like a okay. like a 96 97 degree okay um if if fruit is is okay with this um i think tessel will just like ask like do you want can would you like me to help warm you up with like just a, a hug would you I, like i th i th i think whoever whoever Put a warm spot in my clothes. I think that that helped. I'm just, I'm just gonna go stand, you know, not here. And he'll just sort of waddle toward the hallway. We did a good thing, didn't we? Well, yes. Uh, I would, I would say so. Excellent. The first good thing that's happened since I opened my eyes. <laughs> just gonna <laughs> look around for a key ring real quick. <laughs> yeah, there's one next to the next to the door. And <laughs> just slip it on there. Alright. Uh there is um there are a few key keys that are hanging on these hooks. Um, they're labeled one to six. You put it down on the door number six, or on the thing that's labeled number six. Was the door that we found Fruth in door number six? No, that was door number one. Oh, okay. Just real quick, I'm going to do a scan of the room and 
like just sort of hey anyone in there hey anyone in there anyone in there? anyone anyone in there? anyone okay bye uh Shriek, did you say something oh mostly to myself out of character okay. what's in door number six <laughs> um on in doors numbers two three and four you get If a psychic connection could be sticky and like gooey, that is the best way that I can describe it. But you get back a, um, but like that connection, like whenever you sever it, you just can't help but feel a little gross. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know that like involuntary shiver? Just like rattling through her jewelry, just like, Ooh. and uh, if if you want to make like an arcana check to like sort of understand like what that Ooh. feeling was, like see if you recognize that, you can I'm using my arcana. I'm curious. How's about a fourteen? Yeah, it's it's definitely some sort of. Um, non-sentient undead like like mm -hmm. the psychic connection is a little rotted there isn't like any like labels or anything around here nope just doors no. numbers one through six okay she just kind of like She's like going through the doors to like you know check, and then she stops on that one like, Ooh. and then she like turns and she looks at the other others and she like points very emphatically and just shakes her head like. Mm -mm. Yeah, Shriek uh, will nod in return, and <clears throat> you get nothing from five or six. Nothing for five or six. Okay. Arillo, she communicates as much, mostly through facial expressions. Arillo putting a tiny little top hat onto his frog familiar. So, records room. Y'all want to find out what happened? Yes, is that the that the angle yes. that we're going for? Okay. okay. Yes, that. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Who is that? This. This is Jeremiah. He's my little friend. He uh, is a helper when it comes to uh, you know sorting inventory a little bit of management here and there he's up for a promotion soon uh but don't worry he's he's my familiar you pay a frog to work for you well the frog just sort of turns and stares at you gorilla it's coming it you're you know once we once we get back to it uh uh Back pay at the moment. I have touched on a soft spot. Um, let's go. Right. You make your way uh to that iron window door with the levers outside next to it. Uh you also notice an ashy broom and dust pan leaning against the wall outside of it. Um the uh the door does not seem to be locked. If, mage if... hand. Okay, yeah. Just you mage hand, you you lift the door open. It it sort of raises up. You make your way in. It's a very long corridor. Um you notice that uh like as soon as you walk in, the air is just a little like stale and uh there's you know dust just lining up the walls. Okay. 
you sort of make your way across. Uh, and outside the other door, you see a humanoid figure uh, sort of walk over to the door, turn, reach over, and the door behind you slams shut. Audible panicking from Alivar. Hey! I don't believe we've met. Are you the record keeper? Is that a no? Am I getting non-sentient undead vibes? You sure are. This, this uh, appears okay. to be a zombie. <clears throat> okay, all right. Um, hmm. What's the door lever situation currently? Is this thing, like, hanging on to the lever? Yep. Oh. And uh, okay. can I get just a quick <laughs> perception from everybody? Yeah, oh. you can. I guess... <laughs> Uh, 17 for Shriek. 16. Natural 20 for a 24. Nice. Alivar. It's not dust on the sides of the, of the room. It's ash. Looking around, you appear to be within a furnace. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and this does appear to have been the only way in or out of the area that you were in. Mm -hmm. That explains the door. It explains a lot, doesn't it? Um... Uh, you get the sense that this uh, this zombie is uh, tracking this to make sure that no undead makes its way out that whenever they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. Um... And unless you get him away from this lever, mm -hmm. uh, he is probably going to activate the defense protocol. No! Yeah, okay. so we're going to do that. We're going <laughs> to attempt that with all of our might to get this sure thing are. away from the door. Uh, I'm just going <laughs> to, hang on, I'm just going to do some reedy things real quick. Uh, just real quick reedy things um, to see. Okay. Um... Oh, and it is undead. Shoot. Okay. Uh, okay. I have. Do we need to roll initiative, or is this like a? Right, tell me what you're gonna do. Um. <laughs> no, that that won't work. Um. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. Uh. Yeah, I'm just gonna fucking uh shove this thing as hard as I can you away from the. A thing that is holding the lever i'm just gonna it is try... outside the door oh it's outside the door <gasps> oh i misinterpreted that whole thing um it is outside the door there's just this zombie uh in the herald of dust clothes with a name tag reading maurice on it who is reaching for uh this red lever um okay uh Hmm. Okay. Uh. Shit. If anybody has some. Wait. I have an idea. I have an idea. I figured it out. I figured it out. I figured okay. out my features. Okay. I I can see outside of. I can see to where Maurice is. Yes. Um. Fuck. Hang on. Sorry, sorry everyone. Oh, uh, no, as no. I as I <laughs> totally. figure out the action economy for which I'm trying to do. Fuck. You you may have one action. Uh, I can use yeah. my one action. Use your one action. What are you doing? Magic missile level two. <laughs> <laughs> if I can see him, I can hit him. Oh Arillo. <laughs> okay. Uh actually. Mm. Ooh, His ooh, hand ooh, is on the ooh. thing, though, yeah? Yep. Okay, never mind. Yeah, magic missile level two. I'm going to turn undead. 
Oh, okay. DC okay. Uh, 14 wisdom saving throw from the zombie. Uh, bonus action uh, unsettling unsettling stuff. Unsettling words. Bad bad save for you. No no good save. L- one d6 less. I'm in a furnace. I'm scared. I'm sorry. Okay. Fail on the turn on dead. <gasps> Excellent. Uh, did you do magic missile? Yes. It was 15 points of force damage. How much? 1, 5, 15. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you blast it. It's running. Um, he, he pulled the lever, right? Not yet. Oh, he's running away. But we're, we're trapped. Both in doors here? are closed. I have an idea. Okay. But thank you all for doing that because my idea would not have worked otherwise. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I I think um anyone who is looking out the door um would see uh this almost like an apparition kind of flicker into being um it it's humanoid it's dragonborn shaped um but it's kind of a wispy umbral appearance the features are hard to make out but you see um you know piercing green light where the eyes would be um as a Tessa will manifest an echo outside the door. Uh, <gasps> and I'll just, you know, need another six seconds to complete this. But <laughs> st- stage one that the plan is in action. All right. Um, outside of the door, there is a red lever that is up and a blue lever that is down. Oh, my God. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons Live. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, I um, I do need a uh, uh, a turn to um complete the next stage of my plan because I don't believe the Echo can interact with objects. My bardic inspiration was a bonus action. I have an action and a mage hand left, <laughs> but I don't want to be the one to pull this lever. <laughs> I think well, Shriek has. Crunk? <laughs> Um, Shriek has been, uh, sort of kind of immediately got down on one knee, um, holding something in her hands and was muttering something in Celestial as, um, the zombie ran away. Um, and she'll stand, we can, we can see out the door, right? We can see these lovers. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any way I can try to, like, from where... I'm looking. Does it does it seem can I can I get a sense of what these levers do? I mean the red one is up and the blue one is down, right? Yes. Okay. They are flush against they are against the wall on the opposite side of the door where you're in. Like they're they are on the same wall as the as the door. Okay. Not on the opposite wall. Um, so it will be nearly impossible to get any sort of good view read for any labels, but you can just see that there are, um, a red lever that is up and a blue lever that is down. Ugh. And the zombie had his hand on the red lever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I have logic to all of this out, but here's the thing, you guys, it's been six seconds. Would Alivar have logicked all of this out? Arillo will take Jeremiah, uh-huh. set him out into the hall, uh-huh. and because he is my familiar, I can look through his eyes, mm-hmm. and I can read the labels that are on oh. these fucking switches, hopefully. There are no labels. <laughs> Why would they do that here? <laughs> This place is a is a full on ocean nightmare. 
Um, Arillo thinks, looks to the group, says, 50-50 chance. I'm guessing blue. Because blue looks like, because down is usually the on position, right? Like, normally you don't I'm... throw things up to activate them. Right? So if we put the blue back where it was, it goes up, door goes up. I suppose that would make sense if you pull it down to make the door go down. Unless the down is... Can we see... So we know there's ash on the side. Mm -hmm. Can we see where fire might erupt from? Yes. Okay. Uh, you see the burners. They're all up on the uh Ooh. on the top. Okay. Yeah, just just let me know uh when I can go again so I can activate stage two of the plan. You can go again. <laughs> Sick. Uh <laughs> using fifteen feet of movement. <laughs> I am going to teleport to the location of my echo outside the door. Yeah, so you you see Tessel, their uh, their crystalline scales and everything sort of dim and darken and become almost just like a faded apparition of themselves. Oh my where the god, opposite they're dying. happens to their echo. <laughs> and from my position uh, outside the door. Tessel is just going to be, hey, we have live bodies in here. Can I get a trained professional to tell me how to open this door? Not undead, live bodies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I want to say that like, that like, you guys are, Shriek and Arillo are having this conversation back and forth. And Alavire is just like looking back and forth, like really nervously. Um, and then she, like, turns and she looks out the window and realizes that Tessel is, like, has an apparition moving across the room. And she gets more and more fearful and more and more concerned as that apparition moves towards the levers and then past them. And then, like, does the one smart thing that could have been done <laughs> in this situation. <laughs> oh. Here of a creaky door opening from your north. Uh, and you see this wooden claw just sort of push open a door. Um, are you familiar with honey locust trees? They're, they're this little tree uh, that have thorns growing on them that look sort of like jacks. They're super fucking sharp, and they just, like, sort of burst out of these, like, nodule points all through them. That is the composition of this dryad that opens up this door. Uh, you can just see, like, there's barbs and spikes coming off of them, and they just sort of open up this door. Take a couple of steps. And just look at you. Make a persuasion check. Guys, I'm so <laughs> sorry in advance. I'm really, I'm really sorry. <laughs> They come and approach you. They stand next to you. Reach for the red lever and pull it. We will <laughs> come back after break. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to try and be back in five to ten minutes. Don't go no place unless it's to grab a food, grab a drink, grab a friend, or possibly go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. We'll see you guys shortly. All right, everybody. See you soon. And we're back. 
Hello, everybody. Um, hey, Cyber, what happens when that lever pulled? Well, the honey locust dryad, uh, with a blank expression, looks at Tessel and pulls the lever. Immediately, the burners in the uh, crematorium, this uh, this furnace hallway, uh, light up, and Arillo, Alibar, and Shriek all take 44 points of fire damage, uh, halved for Shriek because of their fire genasi heritage. Um, and Arillo and Alibar are very quickly reduced to ash. Uh, Tessel, you you witness all of this. Uh, you you see Shriek barely hanging on, um, and you see your other two companions uh, disintegrate. That is horrifying. Uh, I'm going to try and pull the blue lever <laughs> as quickly as possible. <laughs> okay. The as you pull down the blue lever. The red lever switches back up, the flames stop, and the doors open. Shriek has been pressed up against the door um, and just falls out on her hands and knees. Um, I think her hair has, like, burnt, so it's all, like, uh, kind of poofy around her, and it is turned, like, mostly white. Um, and she looks up and just lets out the tiniest scream that gets louder and louder and louder. Um, Olivar and Arillo. Um, once again, you, uh, you smell the smell of formaldehyde. You hear the, the little scritching and you hear at Russell Jimmy's Sorry, I haven't been posting on here a lot, guys. I started taking a mood stabilizer, and now I'm not obsessed with gym dark magic anymore. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working. I, I, what? Huh? And both of you, uh, lean up from the table again and see Mort once again staring back at you. I, I, I guess you might consider his expression confused. But it's kind of hard to have that confused expression without eyebrows or muscles in your face. Um, but why don't the two of you uh, describe uh, your characters waking up? You first, man. Um, so this Arillo uh, looks very similar to the previous one. But they are tiny. They are wearing a miniature robe of useful things. And they are otherwise in like a loincloth, like just completely like, ah, ah. and there is uh, uh, near where Tessel and Shriek are. Jeremiah seems to like absorb back into the top hat that Arillo had given him. The top hat swallows in on itself. This tiny little Arillo is like scared and looking around and like touching his chest and seems to have a happy, uh, happy expression. There is the sound of a pan flute. A breeze rolls through and there is from the hallway a top hat that you see two large frog-like legs stick out of. And the hat goes until it is about medium creature sized. And there is this kind of beige brown spotted frog uh, wearing what looks to be clothes like it is set for going to like the 1930s opera house kind of thing. Like it's that very stark white button up shirt, black cloak that has the that has the piano tails coming from it. And he says, ah, I was wondering where I put you. And this frog will go over to the small Arillo. And with a flick of his wrist, that Arillo turns into a rat that is still wearing Arillo's clothes. And he will pick him up and sort of set him on his shoulder. 
Alivire sits up from the pallet very quickly and takes a swing at him. At Arillo or Mort? Uh, or um, at Jeremiah or Mort? At Jeremiah. <laughs> okay. It's it's instinctive. Uh, she she doesn't mean to. Um, this Alivire is jacked. Um, <laughs> she's uh. Whereas the previous Aluvire was very waifish and dainty and thin and like had long hair and beautiful braids, um, this Aluvire is at least a full head higher um, and has biceps like about twice the size of Arillo's head. Um, well, the previous Arillo's head, I guess Jeremiah's head at this point. But yeah, she like she like gets up um and it's it's like uh it's like she heard the the fucking bell ding and she like fucking just takes a swing at the first person next to her all right make an attack roll all right <laughs> i'm sorry about this jeremiah what's your ac my ac is 11 because i am again a spellcastery boy 23 <laughs> <laughs> that'll hit uh do you okay real once again, do you I'm gonna... do you have any special thing on your? Uh... I do, I do. Okay, I'm gonna apologize. Uh, my fighting style is unarmed. Amazing. No, it's fine. Like I, look... uh, ten bludgeoning damage. <laughs> there is like this squishy paunch as you hit Jeremiah. Just ah, oh, fisty cuffs, eh? And he will make an attack towards you. It deals zero damage. It is like the limpest wet frog slap like getting hit much... by one of those little like extendy hand things yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. oh, <laughs> i i think that elevire comes to her senses and like you know is like pretty clear that you know this isn't a threat so she like kind of looks at him confused for a second and just starts looking around the room and meanwhile they just like slap 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 yeah how that be uh how much do we remember you remember everything Okay. You you remember walking down the hallway. You remember uh, being trapped within the furnace, and you remember the lever being pulled. Uh, now you wake up here again, but slightly different. Um, Jeremiah, you do have uh, Arillo's memories. Ah, yes. Okay. Because... Let let me let me follow up question. Um, so previously, uh. We had memories before, like, the events that led to our deaths, right? No. Um, are those memories different now? No. Okay. So it's the same memories, different body. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. All right. No, I can work with this. Um, so, like, um, sort of looking around the room, realizing where she is, um, she's just going to kind of put a hand up to sort of catch his little wet frog slaps. Uh, and then she's going to gesture at him. Are are you that wizard's frog from earlier? Well, technically, that wizard belongs to the frog. But I suppose, yes, frog being reductive for what one such as myself truly is. Um, she's gonna, like, flex her arm and just sort of look at it, like, really confused. Yes, you're jacked now. Straight ripped, I might say. Shredded like a cheese. Pull and as you, as you do look at your, uh, change form, you do sort of get... You start to get the understanding of, like, how your body got to this point. Like, you, all, all the memories that you should have about how your you got to this point uh mm -hmm. do start to come back it does sort of start to make sense again it's hard to reconcile she she pulls up that sleeve um and like reckons with that tattoo that she didn't recognize before and now all of a sudden that tattoo has a lot of positive feelings associated with it like oh hell yeah i remember that too that tattoo that's sick why do i remember that tattoo um, Tessel, uh, the Honey Lucas Dryad stomps off back to the room that it exited from, which is the one to be, uh, north of this hallway. It doesn't happen to say records on the door, does it? No. Okay. 
Well, it still could be records for all I know. Um, yeah, I think Tassel's just gonna kind of, like, they're just kneeling on the floor like this. <laughs> Head in, in hands. And uh, more goes, all right, I've had it up to here with some liveies getting stuck over here. I need y'all to get out of here, like, now. It would sure be thing, my buddy. pleasure. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah bows and begins walking towards the exit, just like, mm, yeah, time to find my way out of this mess. Yeah. Uh, it's it's less a hop down now for Alivar because she's, like, a lot taller. So she just kind of, like, pushes off of the pallet and lumbers after Jeremiah. In the hallway, I think Shriek is kind of, like, kneeled down next to Tessel, just... This is the worst thing that's happened since I've opened my eyes. I hate this place. Records room be damned. We can send a courier. I do not want to be here any longer. And like kind of looks down the hallway. Plat, 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 You plat. hear behind you uh, the sound of two hooves against the stone hall, uh, against the stone floor, and also the wet slap of frog feet. Looking up at um at the frog coming down the hallway, uh a tiny glint of light comes to Shriek's eyes. Jeremiah, you got paid. Oh, I've been collecting dividends for years, good good Shriek. Wait, take a point of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, Jeremiah will, will come over and offer you a webbed hand to help you stand. Then you, then you both did not perish, as I saw. You look and in the floorboard, and there are still two lumps of ash just sort of smoldering on the floor. Or perhaps you have. No, I didn't die. And he'll take the rat and sort of like shake it. And you just see a tiny man uh, get shaken out of the rat. And it's clearly like a very like mind gone Orillo. Yeah, the bigger one of this one did though. That's like disgusting. Cheese? Please put it away. <laughs> at the, at the uh, phrasing of the word cheese, the little Orillo begins shaking his head. He turns back into a rat and... Jeremiah will just feed him. Um, I definitely remember dying. Um, yeah, I think Tessel, like, from their, like, position, kind of, like, falls backwards on onto their butt and is, like, kind of <laughs> almost, like, scooting away a little bit. Like, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 you shouldn't be here. I, as far as I'm concerned, we shouldn't have been here to begin with, but hey. Where's that tree person? I kind of want to have words. They <laughs> went down the hall to the left, up, up north. I do want to point out also, uh, Tessel, your echo was also... They, they took one hit point worth of damage, meaning they're gone. But they wake up in the mortuary room, right? No. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, all right. Good to know. Yeah, weakly point in the direction of where the dryad went. Yeah, so this hallway that you're in, um, it's sort of you can see that it turns in two directions around this room immediately opposite of the crematorium. Um, there are rooms on either side of the crematorium, and there's the room to the north where the dryad went through. I do I do I test fate here? Like I don't know this. I'm not scared anymore. I'm not an afraid person. Um, I'm going to go and give that dryad a piece of my mind. That was very rude to kill us like that. Right. 
you open the door and you notice that it is covered in snow. Uh, it is this indoor grove of just icy brambles. Uh, there are carcasses worn by time, lying partially buried in the sleet and ice. And this skeletal black barked tree looms over the gloomy orchard with a single um, white fruit in its branches. There are three dryads here, um, all with that sort of honey locust sort of brambly exterior. Yeah. Okay, there's three. I was gonna, I don't think I could take on three at once. That's fine. They just look at you. Which one of you started up that furnace? Two of them look at the other one. Who just sort of wiggles her fingers. Points at them. Just so you know, we were alive in there. And that was very rude. Just sort of twitches its head. Not speaking. Carry on. Turn around and leave. It wiggles its fingers again in a sort of dismissive wave. Oh. <laughs> Did you make a formal complaint? I did. And? I, I don't know how much that would help, honestly. May but we please I, leave? I did tell them how I felt about it. Good. Excellent. Now it, may we please leave? Um, I, yeah, we probably should, huh? I won't hold you up here, but there, I, I feel strongly now more than ever the desire to get to that records room. Oh, couldn't we send a courier or something? There must be somebody that we can give some coin to or some other currency, maybe. Yeah, the records room. You guys Are you worried that it's was? because you're feeling awful rough? Alavar, make a perception check. Okay. I'm less good at this now. Natural one. For a two. Do you guys remember where the records room was? Down, yeah, to be fair, I wasn't rightly paying attention at the time. I believe it's just straight down the hallway. No lefts, no rights, it's... They just sat down the hall. Oh, shit, I'm a, I'm a fucking minotaur. Labyrinthine Recall. Is this place maze-like in any way? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you recall the path that you took to this one spot. Um, All right. However, straight down the hallway, quote-unquote, um, would be going to the door just opposite of the crematorium, uh, which would be the door that you're all standing next to. The one uh, around which the hall seems to go around. Can I open that door? Mm -hmm. uh, you peer through this doorway um, and you see this floating feline skull with gemstone eyes hovering above an aged desk strewn with elegant stationery. Deep in thought, the skull chews a black fountain pen and its ink-stained bony fangs. A sea of crumpled papers is strewn throughout the chamber, and dusty scrolls line pigeonholes along the walls. I do this. I do this. Oh, hi there. Hello. My name's Aluvire. Oh, hold on. I'm trying to do it too fast. <laughs> there we go. Um. What's your name? The Ziegnugs. Sorry? They Ziegnugs. 
nice to meet you, they seed nugs. Is that is that right? Can you spell it for me? <laughs> Put it in writing. And it'll it'll spell out its name in front. T H A E Z I A G N U Z. Oh God. I I they seek. They seek nugs. I was waiting for for a written version to come up. <laughs> And so they see dicks nuts. <laughs> Guy, <Kyla, laughs> you betrayed me. <laughs> they, uh, Tess will take a point of inspiration. They see nugs. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. They see nugs. Is this <clears throat> is this the records room? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, give, give me a sec, room. would you? Sure. Ah. Uh, Wait, I got. I actually, can you help me out? I'm. Uh, I've got to write a fucking epitaph for one of the, for one of the singers. Um, one of the Doom Guards. Oh wow, <laughs> well hey, I'm a bard. I could probably help. I think I'm a bard. All right. Uh, if you would like to try uh, to help the Eggnox, uh make a persuasion or performance check. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's the worst fucking thing that could happen. Uh, persuasion or performance, you say? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, dang! Some of that... Uh residual uh energy is there 17 uh yeah you ask for a little bit of uh background and basic basic notes uh by the way this tabaxi demi lich mm, um love it sort of let you know that like they're trying to write an epitaph for um this doom guard who drowned in a bathhouse yesterday mm -hmm. um and are they're trying to write something in the least embarrassing way possible um which is hard considering their whole sobriquet is the sinkers <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah you you just sort of Alivar comes up with something uh, poetic. Um, it's a celebration of life. This is a person who died doing what they loved. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god. Alright. Ah, this will keep me... Well, they won't dock my pay anymore. Ah. Oh, eesh. So what you need? Oh well, okay. So um, I I think we died. Hey, um, who are you guys? Uh, sorry, I never asked your names. We've been yes. really confused <laughs> on account of the fact that we're supposed to be dead. I think I died again. Ah, uh, yeah. What, not what's the name? Pleasant. Can you please uh, find any records for for Tessel and um <laughs> pointing at each person waiting for them to introduce themselves? Mm -hmm. And uh, they sort of spit the pen down into the little ink. Uh, no, it's a fountain pen. Uh, they sort of spit the pen down on the table, uh, and sort of disappear and start biting open a drawer and then diving into all these scrolls. You see paper flying out telekinetically. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for what, an alibi or a, a, a shriek, a, a tessel, and uh, I don't... Uh, oh, yep, there here's one for Jeremiah. Uh, and um, it sort of pops up with everybody's um, death certificate. The nature of my of my uh, departure from this mortal coil has been greatly exaggerated. 
Jeremiah you know, is like, mm, okay, like, I don't think uh, he even reads it. <laughs> yeah, I am scouring that piece of paper for every detail that is upon it. Yeah, it it has it's... your um, your approximate age, um, gender expression, height, weight, everything. Uh, your world of origin. There is one thing that is blank, which is your cause of death. Your time of death is written as earlier that day. Your cause of death is not. Okay. Um, that was like the one thing that we were trying to find out. If if I were to... I This one's explicitly mentioned, so I'll ask. Um, do they, like, how detailed is, like, the description? Is it, like, eye color, scale color? Mm -hmm. um, just making sure everything matches me exactly yes it, it matches you as you are right now just fold up the piece of paper did you say it has the location of death no oh. but it does have time the time yes hey they see Gnuz. um Am I saying that right? It was close enough. Oh, sorry. Um, is there, like, somebody here who is in charge of, like, collecting the bodies and, like, taking people here? Like, I, I mean, find... half the time they just come in through the shoots, but it's really just whoever's out doing corpse collection during the day. Uh they they all usually come in through uh and uh they sort of nudge over to um the door that would have been to the right of the crematorium so we wouldn't know for sure who it was that put us down the chute though now. Oh hey, what time does you guys say? It's it's all about the same time. It's all about the same time. I figured, oh, we might be death buddies. I think we may have also been, and I just have like the smallest inkling of this. So, but we may have also been life buddies. Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> well, I... You, I, I, I mean, you if... all seem familiar, minus the frog. Well, I don't know if I've met you guys before. I do remember my roommate. Maybe he would know more? I don't remember any of you at all. Classic case of amnesia. I believe it's pronounced amnesia. Mmm. Tomato, tomato. I say tomato, actually. Ugh. That's a That's nice so scratch for me. <laughs> I've never heard somebody say potato, though. Never. Not once. Well, there was one time. Substances were involved, but that's a different story for a different time. I knew a guy named Potato. <laughs> he could punch real good. Hessel was not hearing this conversation. They just look increasingly concerned, staring at, like, the middle distance. <laughs> <clears throat> I think Shriek uh, kind of ducks her head down at them and says, Are you still with us? This is wrong. This is all wrong. This is t terribly wrong. I can't say it sits well with me either, but at the very least, we are alive, whatever that means. And perhaps we would feel better 
not in this place. Perhaps some place with a little bit more light, a little bit less stale. I don't know. I feel as though if I could see the sky, things would not seem so bad. Maybe a food? Are you all feeling tapas? Just tiny little finger, little snacks. Oh, if you want a snack, you can go across the hallway. Uh, I'm sure Kingsley can whip you up something nice. He He's really good at making people their last meals. I want more than the last one, but thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for your help. Can we take these with us? Seeing as I, we're not dead. Yeah, I, there's no point in filing them if you are not dead. So go ahead. Thanks, sure pal. See you later. Mind. Sorry, what did he say? I'm sure Skull wouldn't mind. Who the fuck is Skull? Who, who is that? Ah, he's kind of like the boss man. Oh. Would he maybe have some answers that my friends are looking for? If he does? I'm not sure he's the right person to ask. Not a friendly sort? He's all right. He's just kind of... Well, I shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Doing that thing with your teeth that people do when you want to speak ill of them. I, I have no lips. I cannot close my teeth. <laughs> I am a floating skull. Oh, so, like, are you, it, like, be clear with me. Are you, are you grimacing right now, or is yes. this like a? Oh, you are grimacing. I can so do that... nothing other than grimace. <laughs> oh, okay. Is it like if you could choose between grimacing or no, would you be grimacing right now? Yes. All right. I have resting grimace face. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe we shouldn't see this skull guy. Yes, I'm in favor of leaving. <laughs> All right. Let's find somewhere that at least feels better, even if it does nothing to change our predicament. Um, would you perhaps be able to direct us to the exit. Sure. Uh, if you exit this room, you can take either of the hall, either of the hallways. They just sort of loop around this room, and then uh, you want to go and uh, turns to the north side of the room. You want to go out, out that way. It should take you out of a cellar into the streets. Don't go down the gate to the south. Um, that will... I think that'll take you to the Soul Sluice. Alvire will internalize these directions with her labyrinthine recall. And I yep. intend to call on that in the future because I cannot uh, receive verbal directions personally. Uh, we play characters here. <clears throat> All right, well, thank I'm sorry, you. the spirit sump, not the spirit sluice. Those are two <laughs> different things. Sipping on the spirit juice. All right. Um, a guy named Sump Sluice once. <laughs> <laughs> and he what did, did he do? Good. Did he punch? No, but he could really take one. Oh. Um, yeah, Either Shriek way, is going to lead the wanna, charge. It's something you want to avoid. All right, um, so you go back into the hallway and sort of make your way uh, following Thagnos' directions. There's little but the sound of your own echoing footsteps accompanying you. Uh, that is, until you hear the sound of an iron gate creaking as it slams shut behind a figure drifting along the hallway behind you. They're clad in a tattered cloak adorned with a configuration of bony structures woven into a sort of exoskeleton. 
uh, there's a cloud of necrotic miasma slowly billowing from beneath that cloak with a humanoid skull sporting blade-like protrusions bobbling in the miasma where you would expect to see a head. Uh, I do have a visual aid. I will give that to you in our Discord. But it just continues uh, drifting past you, sort of muttering to itself. I'm, I'm so primed for instant death now. I'm just like, oh, what fresh hell is this? <laughs> he looks cool. Wait, does not acknowledge us? Nope, it just sort of floats past you. Alright, Alvar okay. will wave friendly in a friendly manner as he passes by. And it sort of uh, reaches to a door behind you and rests his hand on one of the doorknobs. Which door is Then that? it turns back to you, sort of leaving its detached skeletal hand on the door behind it. Mm-hmm. And its eye sockets gaze emptily at you. Fascinating. Have a nice death. And then turns and goes into the door that it was opening. No, my name's Alvar. Let's discuss that outside. Actually, I do have some complaints about my death, if you're oh. taking them. Oh. <laughs> Jeremiah is just like pushing <laughs> with his <laughs> with his eight strength, doing his best to push <laughs> the tall ones out the door. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Is is that a yes you'll hear them or Yes. No. All right. Well, where do I start? Um I suppose at once we were dead and we woke up and we weren't dead and then we got trapped in a furnace by a very mean dryad. Um and two of my companions here re-awoke slightly different than before, but all the same, re-awoke. Um, and, well, there have been a, a, a couple of nice folks, but that dryad was, was certainly not one of them. Would you like me to restore your death? No complaints from me, thanks. And Jeremiah, like, turns around, Shriek. <laughs> <laughs> I think Shriek is just saying, well, I suppose if I'm supposed to be dead, and just <laughs> is being ushered away. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Fascinating. Okay, I, I'm Alivar. God. Of the heralds of Dutch. Goodbye. Cool. And it leads into the door behind it. Over the table, is that the name that the other person gave us, or is that a different name? Yes, it is the same name. Oh! That, that is the boss. That is the boss of the mortuary. Okay, maybe I should not have talked to him. <laughs> No, we're good. We're alive. Let's go. He's we're all chill. good. All right. Head kind of looks like a spider. You go down this hallway and sort of it ends at this like sort of cellar door and you sort of push it open. You emerge from the mortuary into a dilapidated city square. Uh, there are stacks of jumbled tenements, grimy hodgepodges of lopsided architecture joined by rickety bridges that loom over the persistent, low-hanging fog. An impossible city unfolds around you. Bladed buildings rise on all sides, the urban sprawl spreading along the inside of what appears to be a gigantic torus. The metropolitan ring curves upward into the passing clouds, disappearing beyond the haze. Um, I've... 
I've described this before. Um, it is not the inside of a donut. It is a halo ring. It is a sort of stretch that goes upward into the sky, sort of disappearing into the fog ahead. Um, but the streets do kind of have a sort of little horizontal curve, but you don't immediately see the streets like sort of curling in on top of you. It's just this impossibly long valley. Um, you emerge into the street, inhale the... <laughs> okay. It is a smell that I can only describe as street gravy. Hmm. Yeah. Did you say street gravy? Yeah. yeah, like if you if you go out in New Orleans with open toe shoes, you will be stuck with the smell of street gravy for a long time. Uh, I do not recommend ever doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> um. And there's just buildings. Everybody will be able to level up. And whenever Whoa. we come back in two weeks, this is where we'll pick up. Hell yeah! Cyber, I just want to say thank you so much for running this game. This is incredible. I'm excited to see who dies today. Because we've already had two people experience that curious to find out what uh what the other players at the table are playing but i'm always curious whatever any of you all are playing anything cyber where can we find you what do you do hi um whenever i figure out what the fuck i'm doing uh you can find me on twitch.tv slash cyber world one um but you can find me here on sundays running this game now you can find me on this channel on monday nights in the Gold Rush D D four E game that Wings is running. And uh you can find me on twitch.tv slash high shelf collective on Fridays uh in well for the next two weeks uh where I am playing in the curse curriculum game that they are running in the sigil and shadow system. Uh where I play a fun CS student whose friends all know magic and he doesn't it's fun thenakinger.com incredible <laughs> and hey uh dingo where can we find you what do you do um you can find me on twitter at where's my dingus uh you can also find me on blue sky where's my dingus i don't post very much there but i also don't post very much on twitter um for the most part you can just find me here sunday mornings if you're pst or afternoons if you're est um yeah i'll just be here and kylan where can we find you what do you do hey what's up good people my name is kylan otherwise known as at kyle with and in on uh pretty much every form of social media minus twitter blue sky is the main place um you can follow me on twitch i have plans to stream at some point in the future uh but the main thing i'm kind of doing right now my little passion project is my my pokemon instagram account at fairy fire kylan if you want to follow that and just watch me like post all about pokemon um yeah, feel free to do so. Love it. Thanks, everybody. And Wings. Hey, everybody. I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener. You can find me at DanaeKeener.com, doing nerdy drawings, mostly related to D&D &D and a lot of things on the Indoor Adventure stream, which is right here. Uh, so if you want to check out my art um, or you want to see us play some fourth edition, uh, go to DanaeKeener.com or be right here on Monday, um, respectively, at DanaeKeener.com. And this is if this is your first time joining us, you probably or bleh. I'm gonna start over. Hey, acorns, how's it going? It's me, your buddy, your pal, your friend, the indoor adventurer. If you've made it this far, you probably already know who I am. But if you don't, uh, hey, you can go anywhere. Audio casts are being made available for free. You can go to youtubecom indooradventures Check up on all of the games that we have played up until this point. If you tuned in tonight, slash 
I don't know why I said tonight. It's still the it's barely out of the AMs uh, for us in the Pacific in the Pacific times. Uh, you can anticipate it. There's more coming. It's going to be a good time. I had a blast with this session, uh, but I always have a blast whenever these folks are on the channel. Cyber, again, thank you so much for running this show. Thank you to all, uh, everyone who decided to stop by. And, of course, thank you to these players for putting up with our bullshit once again this week. And now we are going to be heading off to our after show called Nights in the Courtyard over at our Patreon. Go and check it out. But, till next time, we'll see you all soon. Bye-bye! That didn't do anything! <laughs>